Hello everybody, Wayan Physics here and this is another episode of Physics Speed Run. Once again, we are going to attempt to challenge 20 multiple choice questions within 20 minutes. If you want to try this out for yourself, the link to the worksheet is down below in the description box. If at any time I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video, go back to the start of the question and repeat it as many times as you want. You can also change the speed of the video using YouTube's own video settings. Now, if we're all ready, I have my trusty calculator here, my stopwatch here, and we can begin. So I'm going to start my stopwatch now. Figure 8 shows a series of photographs of a tennis ball rolling with constant velocity. The camera was taking pictures at a constant rate of 40 pictures per second. What is the speed of the tennis ball? So this is sort of like a ticker tape situation, right? So 3 meters is from here to here, that is a distance. Uh, we want the speed, so speed or velocity is equal to the distance or displacement divided by time. We have 3 meters. Now the problem comes with the time. So if it takes 40 pictures per second, that means from one picture to another picture, it will be 1 divided by 40. So 1 divided by 40, you get 0 0.025. So that means from one picture of a tennis ball to another picture of tennis ball, that is 0 0.025 seconds. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, so five times, five times it has taken a photograph. So that means the time would be five times 0 0.025 seconds. And that should get me 0 0.025, three divided by answer, 24. Okay, so the second question, the velocity time graph in figure nine shows the movement of a marble along a straight line. Which of the following is true? Number one, the marble's velocity at zero. Uh, the marble's velocity is zero at t is equal to five seconds. So when t is equal to five seconds, that will be right about here. So the velocity, yes, that is zero. Number one is correct. The marble comes back to its starting point at twelve seconds. So this one you need to figure out uh, what is the total displacement. And for a velocity time graph, which this is, the displacement is equal to the area underneath the graph, right? And as you can see here, there's positive velocity on this side and negative velocity on this side. So uh, for the positive velocity, that means it is going further and further away, right? Because you get a positive displacement. <clears throat> and for negative velocity, it comes from a negative displacement. That means it is coming back in the other direction. So if both of these are equal, then yes, it went back to its starting point, right? So the area for the first part, would be, uh, this is uh, 4 and this is 5. So to get the area of this shape, it will be 4 plus 5 divided by 2 multiplied by the height, which is 10, right? So uh, 4 plus 5, that's 9. 9 divided by 2, that's 4.5 times 10, that's 45. So same thing here, from 5 to 12, that is 7. 6 to 8, that is 2. So this, the area for this, part is 7 plus 2 divided by 2 multiplied again by the height which is 10 and you will get the same answer 45 so yes the marble did come back to its starting point last one the marble travels in the opposite direction between t equals to 5 and t equals to 12 so t equals to 5 is here and t equals to 12 is here so opposite direction i would assume uh is opposite to whatever the initial direction is lah, okay? So yeah, because it is a negative velocity, that means it is the opposite direction. So yes, all three are correct, D, okay? Now, the next one, thermal equilibrium happens when, uh, what? So thermal equilibrium is when there is no net heat transfer, okay? It's not that there is no heat transfer, there is always heat transfer, but there's no net heat transfer, meaning the heat going into this object and the heat coming out from this object are the same, right? So the mass of objects are the same, that's not true, okay? We, it has nothing to do with the mass. Type of material, again, has nothing to do with that. Specific heat capacity of the objects, that is not true, okay? Uh, the last one, okay, yeah, the last one is correct. The net rate of heat flow between the objects is zero, right? So that means in is equals to out. So this is D. 
Next, figure 8 shows a balloon that is put in a cylinder filled with air. So what will happen to the balloon when the piston is pulled from P to Q? So um, I think this is uh, quite predictable, right? When you pull up on the piston, okay, uh, essentially you are increasing the area. You are increasing the area of the cylinder, right? And when it, uh, as in the volume, you're increasing the volume, sorry, not area. And when you increase the volume, definitely the pressure is going to drop, right? So the pressure inside the balloon is going to be higher than the pressure uh, of air in the cylinder. So the balloon is gonna, the pressure inside the balloon is going to push out. That's going to expand the balloon, okay? So the balloon is going to expand. Okay, next, uh, figure 30 shows a polystyrene used as a packing material to pack a television. So, oh, this is a very big television, very old. Polystyrene is used because it increases the impulsive force. No, right? we, we don't want to increase the impulsive force. That's going to break the television. It decreases the impulsive force. Yes, that's right. So B, uh, C, it maintains a shape. Definitely no, the television probably is uh, much harder than the polystyrene. So I don't think the polystyrene can shape the television, right? In an accident, the necks of the driver and passengers are protected by the what? Number one, the rubber bumper is in front of the car that is used to absorb the uh, shock, absorb the impact, okay, from any accident. Uh, seat belt is used to stop your body from flying outwards, right? That's to protect the entire, uh, to, to, to fight against inertia, right? To protect your entire body instead. The airbag, the airbag comes out to, it's not to protect your neck, basically, it's to prevent you from hitting the dashboard too hard. Right, you palm like that. Okay, so um, that's again to increase the impulsive, uh, increase the time of impact and reduce the impulsive force, but not particularly for the neck. Okay, uh, the hit rest. Yes, the hit rest is the one that protects you from an accident, especially when you get hit from behind. Because if your car gets hit from behind, okay, your body will be pushed forwards, but your head will be uh, tempted to stay behind. Okay, so you might break your neck when, when it goes this way, right? So the headrest is there to push your neck, uh, to push your head together with your body, right? In case there is an accident from the back, okay? So that's a headrest. All right, a pressure of 2000 PA is applied on the floor with an area of 0.2 meters square. What is the force produced? So we all know that pressure is equal to force divided by area. So 2,000 is equal to the force divided by 0 0.2. So 2,000 times 0 0.2, I get 400 newtons. Figure 2 shows a simple hydraulic system. What is the weight of X that can be supported by 40 newtons? So uh, using Pascal's principle, right, for a hydraulic jack, the simple formula would be F over A is equal to F over A, right, whereby uh, the first FA would be for the one of the pistons and the other one would be Sorry, would be for the other piston. Okay, so 40 divided by I'm just gonna leave it as a cm cube because I have cm cube on the other side as well. So 40 divided by 20 Okay, 40 divided by 20 Let me just write down somewhere is equals to uh, the maximum uh, Force okay, or the maximum weight divided by 100 so multiplied by 100, I'll get 200 newtons, D. Okay, uh, which of the following shows the correct light pathway? So this is a concave, it's a concave lens. And a concave lens is a diverging kind of lens, right? That means the when the light ray goes into the concave lens, it will be diverged away from the center line. So. Uh, this is uh, wrong, this is wrong, and this one definitely even more wrong because this is more of a reflection, right? So C would be the correct answer. Figure 14 shows a ray of light entering a glass prism. What is the refractive index of the glass? So refractive index can be uh, calculated a few ways, right? So one of it is N is equals to sine I over sine R, right? Whereby usually uh, the angle on the top would be the angle in air right and the angle on the bottom would be the angle in the other medium okay so we can see here of course remember angle must always be calculated from the normal itself so 60 degree that's the correct one okay the 60 degrees would be up there 
and here on the inside as you can see from this angle 50 I can tell that this which should be exactly the same angle is also 50 right so between the ray and the normal we're left with 40 degrees okay so your angle here your or your formula here would be n is equal to sine 60 divided by sine 40 okay so sine 60 divided by sine 40 that is 1.347 so it will be 1.35 okay the next one figure 12 shows an oil tanker that is that has high inertia how difficult is it to start moving and to stop so when you have high inertia uh, it doesn't only mean that you it is very hard for you to stop right uh, high inertia means that you if you are stationary you want to remain stationary very badly and if you are moving you want to remain moving at a constant velocity so it's both hard to stop and hard to start right so difficult and difficult that is the answer c a coin is placed on a card on top of a glass as shown in figure 13 when the card is pulled away quickly the coin falls into the glass which law of motion applies to the activity above again when you pull the paper the coin does not want to follow the paper because the coin itself has inertia the coin wants to remain stationary okay and so uh it will remain there instead of following the card okay and the reason it falls is because as you know gravity gravity is very strong right so uh this would be newton's first law of motion okay whereby uh anything that is stationary would want to remain stationary uh, anything that is moving at constant velocity will want to remain at constant velocity until acted upon by an external force okay next figure five shows a block of wood with the word cake written on it Ooh, i would like to have some cake which of the following shows an image when it is reflected by a mirror now when there is reflection by a mirror it gets laterally inverted okay we call this laterally inverted that means left is right right is left you don't get upside down okay so uh if a is like this when it gets laterally laterally inverted it'll also be a right you won't get a, a v shape an upside down a okay so this is definitely wrong uh sorry yeah c and d are definitely wrong okay uh so which one is correct if you really can't tell okay you can do one thing the ends that the end of one letter okay and the end of the other and the start of the other letter will always be together right even though they are laterally inverted let me show you what i mean imagine let's take this part these two ends of c okay will always be together with the start of a right the, the two dots of a okay so if you look at the answer here these are the two dots of a right and these are the two ends of c so that is wrong because now they are separated okay so the right answer would be b right as you can see here the ends of c are still together with the ends of a right okay next which of the following characteristics of image formed by a plane mirror is not true so image formed by a plane mirror same size as the object definitely true laterally inverted we just said that that's true and real uh real is not true right because your image will appear inside the mirror right and inside the mirror that would be a uh, virtual image okay so the answer here would be c sharp and clear definitely yes that's true next one what is the total distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece of a microscope so for a microscope the placement of the lens okay the placement of the lens would be that the objective lens will have a certain let me just draw it out very quickly let's say this is the objective lens right let's say this is the focal length of the objective lens the eyepiece lens would have another would have its own focal length and they would not be touching okay they would not be touching unlike in a telescope whereby the whereby both focal length will actually meet okay the focal point will actually meet but in a microscope it does not meet right so the total distance between the two lens has to be fo 
FE plus a certain distance. Okay, so it has to be more than FO plus FE, right? That is a microscope. The magnification of objective lens is 10 and the magnification of eyepiece lens is 5. What is the magnification of the compound microscope? So magnification will actually be multiplied, right? If you magnify through two lenses, then the magnification of the first lens multiplied by the magnification of the second lens. That is the total magnification. So 5 multiplied by 10, you get 50. The answer is D. Figure 16 shows the image formed by a concave mirror with a focal length. Oh, it does not show an image, right? Okay, I think we have to draw it ourselves. Uh, so, with a focal length F and the center of curvature C. The characteristics of image form are... Uh, maybe there's something missing, right? I think there's something missing. But anyway, let's just try to draw it out. Okay, so if I draw it over here and I go to F, right, so to lens, to F, and then if I go through the center, um, is it like this? I think it should be, hang on, con, this is a convex lens, right, so yeah, convex lens, go through the center, and so my image should be let me just extend this line real quick. Okay, so uh, what I drew here is basically, uh, because this is a convex lens, right? So for a convex lens, I have to draw straight and then towards F, okay? And then I have to go through the center, right here, okay? And wherever they meet, that would be my image, okay? That would be my image, right? So I'm assuming that the question wants it to be at uh, C, okay? I'm assuming that's what the question wants. So uh, this would be the image. It will be inverted, definitely. So uh, C is wrong. It would definitely be real, okay, because it is on the other side of the lens, okay? So virtual is also wrong. And magnified or diminished, that is the real question. Um, I would say magnified. I can't really tell from here, but if I bring this over... I would say it's a little bit bigger than our object. So yeah, I would say magnified. Okay, so the answer here would be A. What is a unit for power of a lens? It is diopter, definitely D. Okay. Next, an electric motor lifts, oh, that's the last question, nice. An electric motor lifts a box of mass 5 kg to a height of 1.8 meters in five seconds. Calculate the power output of the motor, okay? So the power, right, the power would be uh, the work done, okay, the work done divided by the time, okay, the work done per time. And work done would be the force times the distance. Force times, uh, let me put it, okay, distance as S, right, divided by time. And force, of course, means MA, okay. Right, the mass times acceleration, or in this case, the acceleration will be g, uh, gravitational acceleration. So, mass divided by time, yeah. Okay, so mass divided by time, uh, mass would be 5 kg, multiplied by the acceleration here, that's gravitational acceleration, 10. Okay, uh, the distance, a height of 1.8 meters, okay, in 5 seconds, so divided by 5. So, I'll get 5 times 10, um, Oh, it's actually 10 times 18, right? Because uh, 5 and 5 will cancel each other off. So that would be C, 18 watts. Okay, a lift in a building can carry 15 people through a height of 10 meters in 10 seconds. The total mass of the lift and its passengers is 1,500 kilograms. Calculate the power of the lift. Oh, same question. So we can do again, uh, work over time, that is equals to power. And work is equal to force times distance. So work over time is force times distance divided by time. And force is again mass times acceleration. Okay, so times distance uh, divided by time, I'll get the mass 1500 multiplied by the acceleration that's 10. Uh, the distance is also 10 meters and divided by time 10 seconds. So uh, if I cancel one of this off, I'll get the answer to be 15, sorry. 15000 so that's 15 kilowatts okay so the answer is a
Alright, and I can stop, 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 stop. Oh, where's the stop? Okay, stop. Right, I think I can... Uh, it says uh, 19 minutes and 16 seconds here, but I think uh, it's a few seconds earlier lah, because I forgot to stop the time. Alright, so... Still a success, still under 20 minutes, okay? That's it for today's episode of Physics Speed Run, right? If you enjoy this kind of videos, remember to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more physics related content. You can also check out my other episodes of Physics Speed Run content up here. And I'll see you in the next video. Remember, never stop learning.